Hey guys, Bud Rednauer with New Haven. I have a question. Have y'all ever heard somebody say, Boy, that Zach, he's a real good worshiper. Or, Boy, that Hannah, such a solid worshiper. What does that even mean? Well, we'll never know if Zach or Hannah is actually worshiping just from observing them from the outside. We have to know what's going on on the inside. And the only person who knows a man's heart is God himself, 1 Samuel 16, 7. And Jesus is not pleased with an outward expression of worship if it's not reflecting a genuine affection for God that's taking place within the heart, Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9. While worshiping from our hearts is what's most important, what we do with our bodies, our physical expressions during worship is not irrelevant. Raising hands, kneeling, bowing, dancing, I don't know, shouts of praise. They're all very important. So let me quickly give you four things to think about when we gather together to worship. Well, first and foremost, the church should always point to God and draw attention to the gospel, point blank. The church should direct you to God's glory and Christ whenever we gather. If we move the church into bigger external expressions of worship that's not rooted in a clear view of God's glory revealed in the gospel, then we'll obstruct true worship, not help it. Look, when my son runs to me, I have my arms wide open. If the Lions ever win a football game, I will jump up and shout but these natural responses just flow from me. Likewise, a God honor external expression during worship, like raising of hands, dancing, clapping, I don't know, shots of praise, will begin when we clearly see the one whom we worship. When we grasp the gravity of the gospel during worship, we are more inclined to respond with some sort of physical outward expression. So keep God and the gospel at the forefront. And number two, the church should teach what's not appropriate during worship. Look, okay, I get it. Uh, this one's not easy. The church should be teaching this, but I would also emphasize that we ought to pick our battles. I mean, scripture gives a bunch of examples when a physical expression during worship was actually inappropriate and actually offended God. In Isaiah chapter 1, God tells Israel, when you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. I mean, just seeing somebody with an external expression during worship, like raising of the hands, doesn't mean that biblical worship is actually taking place. Some people could be dancing and clapping while living in adultery. Some Christians could be mistaken for statues during worship, but they're actually on fire for God on the inside. 1 Timothy 2.8 tells us what's appropriate in that we lift holy hands that have been made holy by trusting in the work of Christ on the cross. So let's teach why we should have a physical response during worship, but also we should teach why it's appropriate and why it wouldn't be. And like I said, this one's tough, so let's pray for one another as we attempt to teach our congregations this. Number three, the church should examine barriers to physical expressions during worship. So some Christians might be too concerned with what others might think. Maybe that they're too undignified or too immature, but our response to God is based on His worthiness, not on our reputation. If the response is a genuine outward expression to the truth of the gospel, then who cares about what Zach and Hannah think? However, it is refreshing if these people have a concern for others in the sense that they are concerned with being a distraction or drawing a attention away from Jesus, which leads us to our fourth point. Number four, the church should encourage consideration of others. God isn't honored by everything that we feel is going to honor him and glorify him if we're not considering the effect that it might have on others. So church leadership, set the example for your congregation so that individuals will follow your direction in this area. Remember, we're to be concerned with the interests of others, Philippians 2 verse 4. So our physical expressions of worship may need to have some sort of limitations if we're drawing attention away from the purpose of worship. Most often, the congregation will learn from what is modeled by the leadership. So let's pursue theological depth and passionate expression during worship. For more information, you can reach us at newhavenbc.com, facebook.com slash newhavenbc. And for more videos like this or our Sunday services, check us out on YouTube.